Portrait Artist of the Year, Season 9, Episode 3. I have some strong feelings about this episode. Let's get started. And please consider leaving me a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel. We're growing there and there's lots more to come. Now let's look at the self-portraits. The self-portrait is what each artist did in order to be juried onto the program. And we have a very strong field today, but one in particular I feel stands out and I'm just not gonna let that go <laughs> because I don't wanna let it go. It's fun to see how people represent themselves. Here's the painting. This stopped me in my tracks. I love that painting and I'm not gonna leave it alone. I may need, I, I'm gonna need to come back to it. But it's looking like a really strong field and that's a good thing. Now, our first bot celebrity model up is Suggs. Suggs is a English singer, songwriter, and radio personality. <laughs> and he must be famous because he's, you know, when you're, when you're known by your one name, that signifies a certain degree of celebrity. Uh, all right, so here we go. Very simple background, just black and white squares. Let's see what our artists do with that. Sometimes you have to kind of juice things up a little bit. Four hours into the competition, the artists turn their easels around and we all get our first look. And Suggs is gonna pick one to go home with him. And I know which one I would pick, but here we go. All right, here's the first one up. There is something definitely proportionally wrong here and anybody can see it. <laughs> it's just got some wacky proportions. So it's more like a caricature of this person. It, it does resemble him and the size of it is tremendous. That's a lot to cover in only four hours, but wow, the proportions on the head are, are not correct. Not, and everybody has individual proportions, but within those proportions there are certain mathematical things that have to occur. And they're, uh, just trust me, they're off. This one I really like. I like the softness of it. I love when people will take chunks of paint, meaning patches of paint, and describe the shape according to how light or dark the shape is, and then do the same thing with an, uh, an adjacent color, and forms start to emerge. And that's what's happening here. You feel like this figure is emerging from the canvas as opposed to being pasted on top. There's, this, is, this is lovely and soft and, and very accurate when it comes to um, uh, recognizing the sitter. It was a really good choice to just concentrate on the head because you just don't have that much time. So you gotta make some major editing decisions, but I think that's a really solid painting. And it certainly has a color consistency throughout it when it comes to her palette. There's no real wild card going on here. Very harmonious. Here's the one, here's the one whose self-portrait I adore and I adore this painting too. And nothing is gonna convince me otherwise. This is an exciting painter. This is an exciting designer. You can see that he can be abstract as well as literal. The color intensity, just look at how he's dealing with brightness and dullness here. And brightness and dullness is something we don't get a chance to talk about very much in these recaps because, well, frankly, because some people are not colorists. Some people are what, what I call matchy-matchy painters. So they're gonna match what they see with what they have on their palette. That is not happening here. He made substitutions. And we've seen people make substitutions before, but sometimes they don't make sense. And in this case, they make sense because he was paying attention to temperature, how warm and cool things are. There's a lot of instinctual painting going on there. Now Suggs is gonna pick one to take home and I'm thrilled that he picked this one because this is the one uh, I would have picked. And I'm, for me, it's, it's the best painting of the day, hands down, which you already know probably means that it doesn't win, but we will go on. Maquita Oliver, is our next celebrity model. She is a British TV presenter. And what we found with British TV presenters is they tend to be incredibly attractive because you have to be. We all know people on TV are more attractive than civilians in real life because we want to see people on television and commercials that are more pretty than we are. It's just, just a thing. 
Uh, now the artists turn their easels around and we get to see what they've done. So this is our next grouping. And here's the first one up. It's interesting that they picked a monochromatic way of showing her and then color behind. I don't understand the forms. I think the form of orange behind is supposed to be a shadow. See how it sort of mirrors the shape of her head? But if it was a shadow, then it's too bright. It's coming forward. So I'm having a real push-pull. Orange is a good color to choose as a contrast to blue, but it's not receding. It's coming forward. And I find that whole shape a little bit disturbing. It just, it's not resolved for me and, and I, I wanna fix it. Here's the next one up. This has a lot of good expression in it. And I think they've nailed the likeness really, really well. It sure looks like a watercolor to me or else it's a very watered down acrylic, probably a very watered down acrylic. I, once again, finding a watercolorist on this, this program is, is really tough work. Uh, they seldom show up. Yeah, that I don't think that, no, that's not watercolor. So anyway, that's neither here nor there. It's, it's a really nice piece and it's very accurate and it has a lot of life in it. They've certainly used technology. You have to, the art, the actual model is like 10 feet away. In order to see eyelashes, you need technology. So you need both, you need the model and technology there as well. From far away, I'm not so sure it has as much impact as um, as a gallery commission might need. And I know that's in contradiction to the other painting I talked about, which had a lot of softness. All right, this one is more impactful. And again, really good use of blue and it's complementary color orange behind. I think it has a likeness to the sitter. It's building forms with different shapes. Uh, there are some lost and found edges. You see how there's not a lot of outlining going on. When outlining is happening, then you know someone's leaning on their drawing ability, not necessarily their ability to build forms. I, I just have a, a, a belief that painting is more about building forms with pigment. Maybe I'm wrong, um, and I'm sure if I am, you'll let me know uh, down below. Now, and from far away, yeah, I think that has a nice impact. It's certainly a more contemporary piece than, um, I'll just say it's contemporary, meaning that it's, it's spare and that it's not overly complicated. But it's a, it's, it's a fine piece. Uh, it's not the best painting of the day. I already told you who I think is the best painting of the day. So let's see which one Makita will pick to take home with her. And she's got a tough tough road here. Okay, she picks this one. Look how thrilled the artist is because it's an honor. So yay, good for her. I'm really happy. You know, she's young. She's got a long way to go. She's just going to get better and better and better. Our next art uh, model up is Eve Murhead. She's a Scottish curler. And curling, as you probably know, is a sport where you push uh, these big stones down an icy lane it's sort of shuffleboard on ice, basically. <laughs> That's the best way I can describe it. Um, you have to be a fan to really enjoy the sport. Easels are turned around and we get our first book look. When I saw this one, I just thought, that is fierce. And I'm not sure I mean that in a good way. She just looks like that's not her, I don't know what you call that tool that they use in curling, but um, she looks like she's holding on to a sword and she's about to go into battle. There's something very antagonistic. I'm sure it's supposed to be intensity, but um, it, I find it a little bit disquieting. Uh, and maybe portraits should be disquieting. We certainly have had the recent Char uh, King Charles portrait, which was extremely disquieting. Well, so be it. I do like the design element of that uh, circle thing he's done, that half circle dome thing he's done above. That's pretty, that's pretty clever because the actual piece is quite small. And so um, that's an interesting format, you know, long and, long and thin, long and tall rather than horizontal. So I, I like the experimentation of that. It certainly looks like her. Now this is a drawing, um, doesn't look like her at all. That doesn't isn't always a factor on this program, but in the episode before this, we had a fantastic drawing who did get into the semifinals of her episode. So seeing this one so soon sort of feels like, oh gosh, this is a disappointment. It's a very unusual way of, of drawing as I know it. When I see painters draw, they tend to create volume and mass 
rather than depending on line and linear qualities. And this person is, is, is just doing that. And, and for whatever reason, I don't know. But, uh, you know, look at it in terms of intensity from far away. I, I don't think that's going to work as a final commission. And like I said, I don't think it has a resemblance to her. I think if you're hired to do a portrait, you want to have a resemblance to you. It's, it's supposed to be a timeless work. Here's the third one. This one, this one, yeah, I really enjoy. This feels very, very comfortable to me in terms of, okay, we've got a painter here. This is somebody who has spent time on canvas. They've integrated the forms really well. There's no weird or unresolved negative spaces going on. They've captured the likeness. They're using some pretty big muscle movements here. This isn't work from just the uh, elbow down. They're, they're getting involved. This is, it's got some whole arm work in there. And you can see the dashes of yellow throughout. Yeah, they're not, they're, they've made color value swap outs, but, they, they, but the color value swap outs make a lot of sense. Does it have the same color intensity and excitement that the piece that I fell in love with? It does not. But that is just subjective and a stylistic difference. Now, Eve is going to pick one to take home. Let's see which one she picks. I certainly know which one I would pick. And she picks this one. Yay, that's the one I would have picked too. I think it was the best one in her uh, section. Now the judging begins. Now in the final judging, all the artists are lined up, but only three can go forward into the semifinals of this episode. So this has been an exhausting day for them. They had to get to London, which means they didn't sleep in their beds the night before. Probably sleepless nights. You have to bring all your stuff. Uh, you have four hours to paint. You have one hour for lunch and then four hours more. You're interrupted for interviews. You have very hot television lights behind you as well as a crowd that mills around. It would be an impossible task for me. So here's the first one up. This is this definitely shows that the person can do the final commission. They've tackled a lot in only four hours. We've got the, the whole figure and the chair. This is the one that I, I love, and you know why I love it, because of the color, the, 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 there, there is really sophisticated color work going on here. And those are not colors that many people have on their palettes. You, you, you tell me a painter you know of who has that fluorescent pink and makes it work. I can't think of anybody. And here's the next one up. Um, also a really nice piece, but, but I stand solidly that, that the one, the, the uh, one with the, uh, by, by the colorist. I just, I just, you know, it's a painting I'm going to remember and it's a painting I really care about. Final judging begins and this is where we see their self-portraits next to what they did today. So there are our semi-finalists all together. The painting I absolutely love and the painter that I've fallen in love with, deep dived on, is the one in the middle. And um, I know that he is an instructor at a university and he is represented by a gallery, and that's all I know at this time. But there's his work. Oh my God, wow. Look at that. Look at that. That is, that's just darn sculptural. That is created from the canvas. It is, it is, it is emerging. It is not being placed or imposed down. This, this is exciting stuff. This is, this is super exciting stuff. This, wow, wow, uh, I, yeah, yeah, this is a painting I'm going to remember for, and paintings I'm going to remember for a very, very long time. Now, here's our next one. The one on the left, she clearly had way much more time to work on, and so she can do that and give us more detail when she wants to, more contrast when she wants to, more depth when she wants to, and by wants to, I mean when she has more time. Four hours is a very small amount of time to accomplish the task. So I don't know which one they're going to pick, like, like I said, but these, these are all worthy winners. And this one, yeah, that self-portrait, you know, I never really like warm up to a self-portrait with a mirror in it because it's been done a hundred million times. But in this case, you know, hats off, holy smokes, you know, mirror and mirror and mirror. I mean, that's, that, that becomes a little bit more than the usual uh, stereotype. It's beautifully done. And so is the painting that she did today. So let's see, let's see who the winner is. The winner's going to be, dun, 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 dun. I'm holding my breath because I'm always wrong. <gasps> the winner is the one I love so much. Yay, we're going to see more of him. Ooh, I am looking forward to that. 
So remember to keep the white to your paper white, your paints wet, mass for value, mix for color. And the painter's name that I'm super excited about is Tim Tozer, T-O-Z-E-R. Wow. All right, see you next time. Bye-bye.